Hey weirdos, this is Evan Jarvix with Make Oklahoma Weirder, and this is your local music vlog for the week. It is Monday morning, April the 22nd, which I know is a little different. Uh, usually these go out Friday. I did record one this past Friday, but it was factually incorrect at a couple of specific places that most people probably wouldn't even notice, but I decided to delete the video anyway. Didn't get around to recording a replacement. Uh, this weekend has been weird. Actually, the past two weeks have been pretty weird, uh, and I know it's been a couple of weeks since I've done one of these, but I'm back, and uh, here is your vlog. Lots to talk about in the uh, Oklahoma music circles. People have been putting music out left and right. It's a lot to keep up with, uh, but i got to start with Double V. Double V, who I think a lot of y'all are sleeping on, unless you just happen to already know about Double V and are already fans of them like I am. Uh, you may have missed this album that came out, and part of that is probably because they're a studio band. They don't really do uh, release shows so much, or you know, they don't really play shows. I do think they had a release party um, for their debut LP, which came out in 2017. But uh, in general, uh, not, not really much in the way of live performances. So that could change here in the future. But as of right now, it's a studio project. They do put out music videos. Um, but the reason that you should know Double V, well, for starters, it's, it's just a great band. It's Alan Vest and Barb Vest uh, making weird rock music, which, you know, make Oklahoma weirder is, uh, you know, a match made in heaven for. And... Uh, they were they put out an LP their debut in 2017 which was my number 4 pick for the year and this EP I'll be surprised if it doesn't make the list on my EPs this year um but uh yeah this this new EP that's out is really solid I would say maybe a little less adventurous instrumentally but uh, at the same time a little more focused in terms of kind of just having a really strong rock energy to it a uh, really tight few songs that just really have a great groove and everything. Um, but if, if you don't know Double V and if you don't know Alan Vest, uh, you may have heard of a band called um, Starlight Mints, and Alan Vest was very much a big part of that, being kind of their, their front man, their, their lead performer of sorts. And uh, yeah, uh, they were kind of big in the 2000s. I very much dig Starlight Mints. And was always I've always been very appreciative of the sort of arrangements uh, to the music that they would concoct, and I think a lot of that sort of lives on in Double V. And so I I got to shout them out. And if you if you don't know them, you should definitely check them out. Uh, so Double V, Double V, Double V. <laughs> um, I got to talk about Linka. Uh, Linka dropped a mini album over the weekend. It's officially on all streaming platforms. I haven't heard it yet because it just dropped. Um, but uh, Linka had a show at Opolis on Friday, which was not just a release show for this mini album, but is also a tour kickoff uh, for this East Coast tour that she's doing uh, or that they're doing. Uh, Linka being the name of uh, the singer-songwriter uh, Linka Elizondo, but also the name of the project itself. Uh, so when I refer to Linka, sometimes it's confusing if I'm talking about the band or the person. Uh, but it's, anyway, um, Linka and then Rat Fink, um, her uh, producer, uh, are essentially Linka right now. Um, I want to say in one of the interviews they talked about how it was really just the two of them working on this project versus bringing in the other uh, elements of the band. Uh, which, speaking of, uh, she did get a couple of really great write-ups from the Oklahoma Gazette and the Oklahoman, both kind of taking a different, slightly different uh, approach to her music, which I appreciate a lot. Uh, I really like that there's different platforms for talking about music because everybody's got their own perspective on things. Uh, it, all, it would always be nice to have more. Um, but uh, shout out to the people who uh, wrote about Linka this this past month or so. Um, which, uh, by the way, uh, Linka has a NPR Tiny Desk concert 
uh, submission out there. And I want to also mention that Original Flow does too. Original Flow and the Fervent Route, and they were actually the openers for Linka at this show on Friday. So it's kind of cool how that works out. Um, but uh, shout out to Original Flow as always, always hustling. Um, speaking of Original Flow, he's got a thing tonight. Uh, if you've never heard of Lyricist Lounge, it's it's a really cool thing for hip hop uh, in Oklahoma City and Oklahoma in general. It's something that happens once a month at Saints in the Plaza District. Original Flow put this thing together primarily as a networking opportunity, um, but also as a way to kind of showcase uh, upcoming talent and kind of giving people a boost in a way. Uh, it's just a really great thing for the community. And it's always free to get in, you know, and it's it's just, it's a really cool thing. I've been to a couple of them, and it's, there's always just, you know, cool people in the crowd, great friendly faces uh, for the most part. And, uh, yeah, the, uh, the special performance uh, element this time, and again, this is happening tonight, uh, instead of having three or four MCs up, uh, it's just going to be all around the uh, space program, which I have talked about before. Uh, the space program being kind of a collective of Oklahoma City hip-hop artists um, who came together under the wing of one particular producer uh, doing this whole album, like an epic album uh, called uh, Curriculum of the Mind, which I talked about before and won't go into here, but a very important album, and this whole project is really one of the coolest and best and most important things I've seen uh, come out of Oklahoma hip-hop, period, like, this decade. <laughs> so, like, check it out. Like, there's, there's, like, a who's who of people who are involved in this thing, original flow included. So uh, that's happening at Lyricist Lounge tonight. So check that out. Uh, I got to mention St. Loretto real quick for sure. He had his album release show on Friday. And uh, this album's been out for a couple of weeks. Um, but since he's in Austin, uh, he being Evan Crowley, the mind behind St. Loretto, um, but uh, is in a, established as a Austin-based project, more so than Oklahoma City-based project. But having come from Oklahoma City, he's one of the few out-of-state artists that really makes a point to come back and really plug in uh, with the Oklahoma scene uh, over and over. So i got to mention that new album that came out, Passages, which is really solid. If you like everything that came out, on his uh, debut EP, Depths, it's it's a continuation of that sonically. If you like that sort of uh, 80s indie pop uh, aesthetic that's happening right now, uh, he does a very good job of doing that. And a lot of it apparently was recorded in, at uh, 33rd Street uh, Studios here in Oklahoma. So uh, that's cool that he's still keeping it kind of Oklahoma-centric in some way. Uh, gotta shout out Golden Ones real quick. Uh, man, I can't get to everybody, but Golden Ones, um, had the pleasure of, uh, debuting their, uh, their music video, uh, a few weeks back. And if you like everything that was in that music video, if you dig that really high energy rock and roll, uh, with a lot of, uh, yeah, just a lot of swagger, um, it's, uh, the the new the new EP is definitely like a continuation of that. It's it's just a really tight uh, track list, uh, really really amped, really great debut from them. So uh, glad to see that Golden Ones EP out from Tulsa. Um, Blake Burgess also dropped an album recently. If you dig your folk Americana singer songwriter stuff with a little bit of grit, a little bit of maybe downtroddenness, it's uh. It's great for that. I really dug his first album, and his sophomore album is uh, is somewhat similar in tone. Um, but, uh, yeah, I um, really like what Blake Burgess dropped recently. And, uh, yeah, I'm just about out of time. I want to shout out Bobby Chill and the Wave. They're a new band. They just dropped a, a really sh uh, tight and short EP, if you dig something that's a little breezy, a little laid back in the way of indie rock, they do a really good job of that. 
And uh, Brooding dropped a single over the weekend. Brooding, I had listened to their full-length album when it uh, came out, and uh, this is like a pretty significant evolution from what I heard there. Really, really excited to hear what's coming from Brooding now, and uh, I think I'm going to have to leave it there.